On September 17, 2000, Jane Andrews, who was a former dresser for the Duchess of York, would hit her boyfriend Thomas Cressman with a cricket bat, and then she would stab him, all because she was upset that he had told her he did not want to marry her. Hi everybody and welcome back to Killer Concepts, the place where you talk about all things true crime. My name's Peyton and today, like I said in the intro, we are talking about a woman named Jane Andrews who on September 17th of 2000 would kill her boyfriend Thomas Cressman all because he did not want to marry her. Perhaps one of the most interesting things about this case is, is that Andrews actually did work for the royal family for quite a while and so that has made this case I think probably a bit bigger than maybe it would have been had she not worked for the royal family. If you have not done so already, make sure to hit that red subscribe button down below and turn on your post notifications so that you do not miss a thing or any future videos. So as always, before we get into the actual crime or what happened, we are going to start with Jane Andrews early life and then we'll get into her career and then how everything came to be. Jane Andrews was born April 1st, 1967 in Cleethorpes, Lincolnshire, England, and she was the youngest of three children. Now, her parents didn't have much money, but they did do the best that they could, and both of them actually worked, which was something that was a bit unusual for the time. Um, usually, the woman would stay at home but her father was actually a carpenter and then her mother was a social worker because her father's work was not always the most consistent and so her mom had to work in order for them to be able to afford to survive. Usually I would give you guys the name of the parents, that's just something I try and do, but I could not find it in this case and so we're just gonna have to go without it. So as I said, Andrew's parents were not very wealthy and so when she was only eight years old, the family would actually have to move because their debts had grown so great and they would have to move to smaller and less expensive accommodations. The family would end up moving to Grimsby, which it wasn't a bad place, but for a family of five, it was quite a small household. There wasn't a lot of room, and in fact, their bathroom was actually outside of the house and not inside of the house. So for three children and two parents, it wasn't the ideal situation. And like I said, they moved there to try and help with their financial situation. But unfortunately, moving to this home really did not help them with that. And they only continued to amass more and more debt. Jane Andrews has actually recalled that when she was younger, she remembers a specific incident in where her mother actually had all three of the children look for spare change throughout the house because she didn't have any money at that moment and she just needed it to get a loaf of bread. So they were very poor at that time. One thing about Andrews is ever since she was young, she was very intelligent. She did not struggle in school with her academics. She was just naturally gifted and she actually excelled in grammar school. However, the lack of money in the family household caused many arguments and sometimes those arguments made it very hard for Andrews to really focus on her school assignments and so they would not always be on time and she was not always the best student even though she had a great capability of being a good student. Even though she was not always the best student in general, she still got very good grades in school. It's unfortunate that her family situation just was a little bit poorer than others or maybe she wouldn't have ended up where she did in life, but who knows. 
So throughout her teenage years, Jane Andrews actually suffered from multiple psychological problems. She had panic attacks, she suffered from depression, and she even had an eating disorder at one point. And she began to be so depressed that she became truant from school. She just wasn't showing up. Her parents really didn't know at first, but when a social worker would appear at Andrew's household, her mother would find out. And when her mother found out about that, she would find a bottle of pills in the family cupboard and she would swallow a ton of pills and she would begin to overdose trying to commit suicide. Her parents would find her, but unlike what you would think most parents would do, they would not call an ambulance. They didn't want people to know that she had tried to commit suicide. It was a very hush-hush thing and they didn't really talk about it. Instead, what the family did is they just left her in her room and she would go in and out of consciousness until she finally got better from all the pills she had taken. And let's just say, I think we definitely know in this day and age with so many drug addictions and problems, they're just very, very lucky that their daughter survived that situation because so many times when people overdose on a medication, they don't survive that. And it just shows some negligence on the parent side. While their daughter should not have done that, she was suffering from depression. She was upset because she had been truant and her mother had found out and she was upset. And there was a different way that they probably should have went about remedying that situation. So when this whole incident happened, Jane Andrews was only 15 years old at the time, but this whole overdose and suicide attempt ordeal really did not keep her from being truant. It's something that she continued to do, which was affecting her schooling, even though she got good grades. It just, it wasn't a very good situation. And this would only rub off in the future and you would see how it would impact her in the future. Two years later, when Andrews was 17 years old, she would then become pregnant. This was not long after she had enrolled at the Grimsby School of Art, where she had decided that she was going to do some fashion classes because that's something that she was passionate about and wanted to do. And the young girl didn't know what to do with herself. And so she actually decided to have an abortion. And in multiple of the articles that I read and from conversations that people have had with Jane Andrews, this is something that would leave a lasting impact on her life, which it does for many people. Apparently it was a very traumatizing experience and it would follow her throughout her entire life and it was just very traumatic for her. After Jane Andrews would finish her fashion schooling, she would end up going and getting a job designing children's clothes at a place called Mark and Spencer's. This is not something that I'm very familiar with. I am not from the UK and somehow I ended up doing third video in a row on somebody from the UK, but I am not familiar with this clothing place. So if any of you are, please inform me as to more about it. I didn't really look it up, but that is where she worked designing children's clothes. But when Andrews was 21, she would end up applying to an ad, an anonymous ad that was left in the lady magazine. And this was to be a dresser for someone. I'm sure at first she did not think she was going to hear back from the person because six months later, she finally heard back from the ad. And it just so happened to be Sarah, the Duchess of York and a member of the royal family. And she would request an interview with Miss Andrews and they would hit it off right away and Four days later, in July of 1988, the Duchess of York would hire Jane Andrews to be her dresser and to work for her at Buckingham Palace, which I'm sure for a girl who grew up with no money, this is a huge deal to her, especially with the fact that she likes fashion. And now she gets to dress a member of the royal family. And this meant an extreme amount to her. 
And I'm just going to stop for a second because I know what you're thinking if you have not heard this story. How does somebody who works as a dresser for the royal family end up committing a murder and going to prison? Well, just be patient because we're getting there. Um, it gets a little messy here shortly. So as I said, Andrews had found a job that put her in high society, which is where she wanted to be because she grew up in a very, very modest household that did not have much money. And so it was exciting for her to be able to carve her own path in life. She was a pretty girl. She was fashionable. And this opportunity was something that I'm sure she never expected to come along. I mean, she answered an anonymous ad, but it did. And so the royal family was only paying Andrews 18,000 pounds a year. And from what I know, this is a pretty small salary. It's nothing special, but it's enough to survive. And so people started questioning her because she began to lead a much more extravagant lifestyle, which it's not enough money to necessarily live that way, but she found a way to do it. She would buy a nice car, she would buy a really fancy flat, and she was always dressed in some of the most fashionable clothes. Now perhaps this is because her and the Duchess of York, Sarah, had become such good friends, or maybe there was something a little strange and a little hinky going on, but nobody will ever know for sure. The Duchess actually called her Lady Jane in only a year year after she began working for her, she ended up meeting an IBM executive named Christopher Dunn Butler. Now, Butler was about 20 years her senior, so they had a fairly large age gap, but they seemed to have a pretty fast whirlwind romance and apparently the age difference didn't really matter and it would only be about three months before Butler would actually propose to Jane Andrews. Now some people speculate that she said yes because he had a lot of money and then other people believe that they were really in love at the time. And so then in August of 1990 the two would marry but their relationship would quickly go very cold. Andrews had a tendency to be unfaithful to Butler and apparently this is something that had been going on for a long time. She had multiple partners and this is something that she has admitted. She said she's not proud of but she has admitted to it. But when she would meet a man by the name of Dimitri Horn who was a great shipping magnate at a charity event, she would leave her husband. What she did is she just moved out of her home that she lived in with Christopher Butler and she moved into a flat that Sarah the Duchess of York had helped her rent and that is where she would stay. And not long after, Butler would actually file for divorce citing infidelity which was not a lie at all and they would move on and they would get divorced. So at the same time as Jane Andrews divorce it just so happened that Sarah Ferguson the Duchess of York was actually also having marital problems with Prince Andrew and those two would end up separating. Now there was some rumors that this had to do with an affair but it was never proven and so the two women women really bonded over their situations and the Duchess would end up giving Andrews even more responsibilities and the two just became very very close. And this is where it would kind of start to get sticky and go downhill for Andrews because it wouldn't be long when Dimitri Horn would decide that he no longer really wanted to be in a relationship with her. And Jane Andrews really didn't take it well at all. So one day when he was not home, Andrews would actually visit his flat herself. She would go in, she'd smash his possessions, she would go out of her way to write herself a check out of his brother's account, and she would scratch any references of her out of his journal. Let's just say we all know this is extreme crazy possessive behavior 
don't do it. I know how mad guys can make you, but if you're out there right now and you need to hear this, don't do it. It's not worth it. Been there, done that. Let's not. But unfortunately, it came out that this behavior wasn't something new for Jane Andrews. She had harassed and threatened multiple past lovers that she had had. She had vandalized the car of one of them and then she had also went to an abortion <laughs> clinic one time and called the guy that she had just broken up with and tried to say that she was getting an abortion unless he got back together with her and that didn't work out for her but these are the kinds of things that she'd do when her relationships would go awry and Jane's life would only continue to go downhill so as I said she had become really close friends with the Duchess of York and her relationship had just went in the can and then in November of 1997 she would actually be dismissed uh, from her position as a dresser after being there for 10 years she wanted an answer she wanted to know why and they pretty much just told her that it was because of budget cuts now there are many different opinions on whether or not that is true. Some believe that uh, one of the people that the Duchess had been speaking to also had his eye on Andrews. And then another huge theory is that she may have stolen a ton of money and possessions from the royal family, though it has not been proven. Like I said, people had questioned Andrews before because she only made 18,000 pounds a year and she had a very nice flat and she had a savings of up to 50,000 pounds and so it was very unusual for the amount of money that she was making that she would have the amount of possessions that she did. After Andrews was released from her position by the Duchess she was extremely depressed. She lost a ton of weight and she actually took quite a while to find another job. She never thought that she would lose that job. She thought she had been there forever. Apparently Andrew says that the judges told her quote only a few weeks before, I'll never get rid of you, you're with me for life end quote. And so she just had fallen into a very deep depression, which we knew she had a problem with when she was a teenager as well. But eventually she would secure a position working in the silver department in the jewelry store Annabelle Jones. And this is where she would work up until she met her demise. But in August of 1998, things would start looking up for Andrews. An acquaintance of hers would would introduce her to a man named Thomas Cressman. Cressman was a 39 year old former stockbroker. He was super successful and now he ran a business selling car accessories and he was very high up in upper London society and he was exactly the kind of man that she wanted and so she went for it. So apparently when she met him, he had insisted on driving her home and so he did and then he had told her that he wanted to meet her the following night and the two started dating but they had a very tumultuous relationship. It was very on and off. So Pressman was a very bachelor type man. He liked being single. That was just kind of the lifestyle he lived. He was all over the place. He liked to travel. He liked to do things. He liked to have fun and this is something Something that you can hear in interviews with his brother. That's just how he was. And then you had Jane Andrews who she really just wanted to get married and she wanted to settle down. Now even though the two didn't always see eye to eye, they seemed to stay together or they were on and off constantly. So some people believe just like some of her other relationships that the reason she really wanted to date Thomas Cressman is because she wanted to see herself be become a part of higher society again after she had fallen off that pedestal when she had lost her job working for the Duchess. This did not work out for her exactly how she planned. She insisted that she wanted to be with him because he was who he was and she liked him. But then she also insisted a couple other things. So she told multiple people that he became a very violent man, not necessarily just physically abusive, but more in the fact 
fact of the bedroom. Apparently he always wanted to do very devious sexual acts like bondage, anal sex, uh, role play, and Andrew said this wasn't stuff that she was into but he was very persistent on it and she didn't want to do it, he did, and it was something that was constant conflict in their relationship but she would stay with him anyway. Apparently while they would argue they would each threaten each other because they would tell each other their secrets. Apparently she had had told some secrets to him that she probably shouldn't have about her relationship and her time working for the Duchess and this would be a constant reason to argue for them. Regarding their relationship, Jane Andrews said, quote, it was such a complex relationship we had. I was the ultimate in insecurity. He was the ultimate in commitment phobia. I would threaten to leave. He would tell me to leave. Then he would reel me back in. He knew which carrots to dangle. He knew which strings to pull." End quote. Then in the winter of 1998, Andrews would actually end up breaking her wrist. And this is something that she would end up blaming on Cressman. She said he did it on purpose. Apparently he had let go of her while the two were dancing and she thought he did it because he wanted her to get hurt. And apparently after she got hurt, then he said to come stay with him so that he could take care of her. But then Thomas Cressman's friends on the other hand said that Andrews just seemed to use that as a reason to move in with Pressman, which was not something that he wanted. And so you have these two stories. You have a Jane Andrews who says he was a very volatile man and she could be very insecure and possessive. And then you have his friends who are saying, hey, that's not the case, but he's dead now, so you can't really hear his side of the story. Apparently, Jane had no intention of leaving his apartment once he moved in, and he would actually try and end the relationship, and it would go very, very badly. So on September 17th, 2000, the relationship between the two would end, but not in the way that anybody would wish it had. Had. So apparently what had happened is the two were actually vacationing together. So they went to a boat show in Italy. Then they decided they were going to go to the Cressman family villa on the French Riviera. But the two were constantly still bickering because apparently Andrew said that he had agreed to marry her. And then he had taken that request back and said he did not want to marry her. He wanted their relationship to end when they got back home. But then she said he changed his mind again and it was an on and off thing from her account. But apparently Andrews had driven home from the airport with Pressman's family and they had overheard the phone conversations and it was very clear that the relationship was completely done between the two of them. They were not getting married. He did not want to get married and that was that. But those days would be the last days that his family would ever see him alive because of this. So like I said, Andrew said that while they were on vacation, he had said that he did want to marry her. But then on September 16th, he would have her come over to his flat and he would tell her that he didn't want to anymore. And apparently how it would go down is that he would assault and anally rape her. And then he would just push her out of his flat. And that is how it would end. I don't want to say she's lying, but I also don't want to say it's 100% the truth because there's no proof to it. But what we do have is that on that day when he apparently tried to physically push her out of his flat, there was a physical altercation and Thomas Cressman would actually call the authorities. Short story, they would do nothing about it. But I do have a book that I love and I will cite it down below. And they actually gave me some quotes from the operator call and I'm going Going to read them to you. So this is, it starts with Tom. Tom, I would like someone to stop us 
hurting each other. If you don't have somebody here soon, somebody is operator, right? Mr. Cressman, Tom, yes, operator. All right, what are you wanting your partner to do? What are you arguing about, Tom? Our relationship, operator. Do you not think it would be better you discuss it when both of you calm down? Tom, I would love to discuss it calm down. She will not. Operator, do you want her to leave? Tom, yes. Operator, right. What you should do, sir, arrange for her to find suitable accommodation. <laughs> Sorry, these operator calls just get me so worked up. Tom, I would love to do that. Operator, that's not something the police can provide you. Tom, no. Operator, that's something you will have to discuss calmly. I will get the police to come and see both of you. All they will do is advise you regarding your behavior. There's nothing specific we can do. We are not a marriage guidance service. We deal with crime. And that was the end of the call with the operator. Uh, he called the authorities because there had been a physical altercation. He wanted help and nobody came. So the operator had said they were going to send out police to calm down the situation. Well, nobody came at all. And I kind of feel like somebody should be held accountable because then somebody would end up dying. So apparently, according to Jane Andrews phone calls, she had left the flat by noon. But that is very much questioned. As I said, after the that argument one of them would be dead and that would be Thomas Cressman. Jane Andrews would say that that morning the two would argue he would try and have anal sex with her again and a huge fight would ensue and to her it seemed like a dream that it wasn't even real but clearly it was because somebody's dead. She said Tom had fallen asleep and she believes she may have fallen asleep too when all of a sudden she heard yelling and Tom was attacking her and this is when she would eventually get a chance to grab a cricket bat and she would hit Tom with it. Apparently after she struck him in the head with the cricket bat, he would then pull her hair and they would continue to struggle and then he would fall onto an 8 inch knife. One thing I'd like to mention, according to Andrews earlier, she had carried the cricket bat and the knife upstairs for some reason. I don't know if she just felt there was going to be an argument that ensued or something, but apparently it was already upstairs, which is very suspicious. So after Tom had apparently fallen on the knife, he would bleed out there on the floor. Apparently Andrews would then go shower, which she said she has no recollection of but there was evidence that that had occurred and she kind of spiraled into herself and she would disappear. Nobody really knows how long before she disappeared that she was in the house but she had left a note that said Tom hurt me too much. He was so cruel to me end quote. And she just left that and then she left the house and nobody could find her for several days. Tom's body would be found by a co-worker two days after his death and during this time like I said she had ran off and Andrews would be texting multiple friends of hers. Among these was the Duchess of York and the Duchess of York would urge her to turn herself in but she wouldn't do this. Instead four days after the murder she would be found curled up in the back of her car overdosing on pills again like she had in her childhood and this is when they would arrest Jane Andrews for the murder of Thomas Cressman. So Andrews said that the whole situation was self-defense and of course we will never know for sure but evidence did not really show that. Scientific evidence shows that he was stabbed. He didn't really fall on a knife. He was hit over the head with a cricket bat which she said that he was. The whole situation surrounding his death was very suspicious and so the jury would end up convicting her of murder and she would be sentenced to life in prison on May 16th, 
2001. Not long after she was sentenced to life in prison, she would actually be diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, which possibly explains some of her behavior throughout the years. And then in 2009, she ended escaping prison with a couple other inmates, but she wasn't escaped for long before they found her. But her prison term would not be life because then in 2015, she would actually be released. Now it says that in 2015, she was released on license. I'm just going to assume this is like a role in the United States. And actually, as of recently, I have seen articles about her shopping and many times people and stories will refer to her as the former Duchess of York's dresser. And there is actually a new documentary out about her that I think is done by ITV. I am in the United States, so I do not have their channels or their program. I think I would have to get a special subscription to watch it. So if any of you have watched it, please let me know and let me know how it is. So that is all I have for you today in the story of Jane Andrews and how on September 17th, 2000, she murdered her boyfriend, Thomas Pressman. I honestly thought this was going to be a short video, but I think it was quite a bit longer than I planned. In other thoughts, I hope you enjoyed it. And next week, I will be giving you another reaction video to funny crimes that I have found. And I can't wait to share them with you because I had a lot of fun doing it last time. As always, I would love to hear your case suggestions. So either leave me comments down below, private message me on Instagram with them, or you can send them to my email at killerconceptsblog at gmail.com. Don't forget you can also send me emails just discussing cases. I would love to hear about them and I would also like case suggestions on funny cases. Before we go, as always, remember that the world's most dangerous minds hide in the most unlikely places. Stay safe.